Welcome back to another video guys. Today, we're fixing the fitment on my car. Because uh, if you come over here and take a look, you can see, um, actually this one doesn't have as bad rubbing as the other side. But I'm rubbing in the rears, I'm rubbing a little bit in the front, so we're going to pull my fenders today. Probably the ghetto way with the hammer. We are going to at least do one thing right, which is disconnect the coil over on the bottom so I can test the fitment while I'm pulling or rolling the fender, rather than going out for a test drive. It is... It's 94. We're cooking. Feels like 100. We're cooking right now. Stance boy life. Stance boy what life. What you know about that? <laughs> he don't know shit about that. He if got sparks don't fly. Your ride's too high. high. <laughs> shit. All right. We uh, got the power steering pump pulley on. The Cobra actually should be able for a first start. Hopefully a first start in first the next like drive. hour. Yeah, drive, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Correction test came back good, so she should yeah. run. The lowest was cylinder six at 148, and the highest was like cylinder one or two at What's 165. Once we just throw the spark plugs and coil packs back in, uh, spark plugs right. and coil packs are back in. I already threw them oh. back in. Yeah, get that power steering pump figured out, accessory belt hooked up, and we should be all good to go. We'll see if it starts. It's a shirts off kind of day today with it being like 95. I don't even know what the real feel is, but it's probably like at least 100. Feels like we're out in Texas out here, but nah, we in PA. Oh shit. Damn. Cut a hole off before she failed me. I'm so dope, might as well go on the scale me. No, I'm the shit right in bit, they can smell. I'm a true young nigga out of Texas. Like Got the wheels off. We're gonna go disconnect the coilovers, and then we're gonna get right to fitment testing and pulling. Alrighty, so instead of taking the coilover off and doing it, we'll say, the right way, I'm just gonna drop the car on its nuts in the back, and that should give me enough room. You can see we have this entire section of coilover adjustment that I can drop it. Right now, the way it sits with the fenders, it's barely rubbing on the driver's side, if really at all. It's mainly just the passenger side it has been rubbing a lot. I don't know why, it's almost like the fenders are a little bit different on the passengers, the driver's side or something. We're just gonna jack under it, and we should be able to get enough clearance to bottom out the suspension or get pretty close to bottoming out the suspension so that we can see if we run into any rubbing problems. I'm gonna take this piece of cardboard and the Sharpie and just mark exactly the height for both sides of the coilovers so I don't forget my ride height settings right now and then we'll get to dropping it. So we got the rear driver's side right here and on the other side we have the rear passenger side. Now we'll just keep this piece of cardboard, we'll just absolutely dump the rears, test the fitment and then now we'll know once we finish the job. We've got her absolutely slammed in the back and yep you can see this one is well slammed all the way at the bottom we're gonna toss the wheel on we'll get the jack and we'll just simulate going over a bump hopefully we can fix this fitment problem once and for all then i can take her to get an alignment and we should be good to go Ten times chance that this thing will blow up before he even walks out of here. Comment down below if you think the Cobra will blow the f*** up. <laughs> it most definitely will. It, it definitely will. So as you guys can see here, I have my new starting riding height. Nah, I'm kidding. This is ridiculous. I already found my rubbing issue. There's literal contact here with the tire. So this should be a relatively easy fix. So I did check the fitment the whole way around. We're good there. We just gotta snip that part, adjust the coilover, and then head over to the other side and do that. Update like number three. We cut the bumper and now it's looking good. There's clearance the whole way around and now I know that anytime I hit any bump, really no matter the size, I'll be alright. We're just gonna head over to the passenger side, do the same thing. I'm expecting probably like a little more work than what I had to do on this side. Let's hope we just have to cut a rear bumper. So as expected, we got a problem here with the rear bumper. It's definitely making contact. We're gonna have to cut this out a little bit. And then also, it looks like we're gonna have to pull the whole fender up through here. I know it looks extremely tight, but with the light up in there, there's really only rubbing between here and here. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but I kind of saw it coming, so let's so get right to work. One hour later. It's been like an hour, or a decade, maybe. We finally got it, so it's not gonna rub. It took a lot of work, I'm not gonna lie. I use the mallet a lot. You can see my paint's all messed up. If you don't wanna deal with that, make sure you heat your fenders or you'll have this problem. I'm just kinda letting it go because I'm gonna end up respraying the entire car. I'll probably even get over fenders at some point, so that's why I'm not really worried too much about the paint here. There's clearance. As long as it doesn't bottom out, I really don't care. The rear bumper is literally sitting on the tire. We're gonna cut that really quick, check the fitment one more time, and then honestly, I think we're good to go. I got the 
rear bumper cut. I no longer have any clearance problems. That means our wheel is good to go. Everything should fit nice and snug. Not snug, actually, nice and freely. I guess just there's one thing you guys can take away from me doing this. If you guys want to run any sort of aggressive fitment on your car, like at all, it's gonna take a lot of work. And I'll just tell you this, I've rolled my fenders on this car multiple times now. Nothing beats sitting down, doing it right. It saves so much more time. If you guys are also doing this, just take your time and do it right. Do it right, not twice. My time has come. You must continue your journey without me. Now that we got both sides all dialed in, we're gonna go ahead and raise the suspension back up to where it was before. We're gonna put the wheels back on. We should be good to go. Yeah. Cut a hole off she failed me. I'm so dope, might as well gonna scale me. Know I'm the shit, right in big, they can smell. I'm a trill young nigga out of text like Pepsi. Why were you step in the street and get slippery? No, no slippery. We're done. We're done with the fitment problems. Let's peep the fitment the whole way around real quick. Here's what we got so far. It's honestly exactly where I wanted to sit. I think it looks great. It'll be a little bit lower, but it's looking pretty good. I guess tire and fitment job complete. And now we just got this thing we're gonna try to get started up today. A few moments later. First start. Yo, that is chopping. The next day. Fixed all of, hopefully, the idling issues. Gotta go take it for a spin and see how it does. What are the chances it blows up on the road? Damn it. Let's get a cold start going on here. It is moving. No, what are you doing? <laughs> Austin! Right. What are you doing? It's fun! I'm gonna go edit the video that you guys probably already seen by now. This is definitely have seen by now. Him in the future. Me in the future. So, today we're gonna be working on the cylinder head for the bus then. Um, we're gonna disassemble the pre existing valve train that is in them. And I already got one cylinder head done here. We have everything completely out. We just have these valve guides that are gonna need to be pressed out at the machine shop and new ones put in. We got all of our old hardware here, all of our valves. Valve springs, seals, retainers, guys. Valve springs, comp cam valve springs, steel retainers, uh, the lightweight ones so that you can rev a little higher. Upgrade valve springs so that you can rev a little higher. We kind of spec valves them, seals. We're gonna start working on this one. So for those of you who don't know, uh, real soon we're gonna just be building the entire motor. And we're starting here at the heads because these need to head off to the machine shop. God knows how long that's gonna take. Next week, actually this week technically, I am going to be tearing apart the T56 transmission for the bus tank. Kind of go for like a 600 horsepower. So we got this eBay valve spring compressor tool. Comes with this to put down. We're gonna bolt this up. Alright, so now that we got the tool mounted up to the cam towers, we are going to set over top of the retainer right onto the spring itself. So it's not pushing down the retainer, which doesn't work because you need to compress the retainer as well so you can loosen the keepers. So, luckily, found this washer in the garage. We're setting that on top of our retainer. Get it, and we see that we're not sitting on top of the keepers. Now we're gonna go ahead and compress the spring. In a normal scenario, the valve should just stay in place. That hasn't been my key so far, even when I had something underneath here. What we gotta do to free up the keepers is flip this on its side. You can see our exhaust valve right there, and we're just gonna give it a little of a tap. You hear that pop? You can see right there that our keepers are now up. We're gonna go take the magnet. There are your keepers. So that's what you need to get the valve out. Then we're gonna flip it on its side. Go on the back side and push this valve down and out. And boom, just like that it comes out. 
So then I'm gonna go ahead and put some tape on this and mark which valve it came from and we'll go from there. So we just marked that one and we're gonna go ahead, pull the bolt out, pull the housing off so we can get the valve spring retainer and valve stem seal out of there. Mechanic. Do not do as I do. Don't even do what I say. Just, this is just us doing this for the first time. 600 horsepower build, more like six horsepower build. More like probably won't run build. I don't know why this, these are so tight. None of the other ones were tight, except for these two intake valves, so. All right, so we got the four valves out, so now we're gonna go ahead. Grab one of them with the pliers. But if you... There we go. Yeah, until they come out. Quick interruption from the Mustang motor build. Bentley here is changing his oil. And, um, and look who's doing it. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> you said let me see. You're struggling just as much as I was. So the two oil filter wrenches we have, one is just barely too small, and the other one on the smallest setting is just barely too big. <laughs> Give it to Dad. <laughs> For those of you who don't know how to take off an oil filter, all you have to do is turn left. This is apparently news to Bentley. I'm gonna let him do- Oh! <laughs> oh, it's, it's, oh, it just got on my f***ing face! Oh, what the f***? Oh, dude, oh, it's f***ing hot too! F***ing shit, it's pissing on me! Take the f***ing camera! Get this shit off! Oh, f***ing <laughs> <laughs> and we're out of shop towels now. Great. <laughs> the joy of doing an oil change. Get that shit out of my face. Today might be the last time this car ever runs. Today, hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully not. But today we're going to start the process of pulling everything out of the bus thing to hopefully build the motor. Um, today we're going to just start. Fuck you, train. Anyways. Today we're going to start with the basics. <laughs> um, cut. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna start with just pulling the bumper off, the hood off, exhaust off. So, let's get right to it. Yeah, I uh, kinda forgot my SD card at home, so that's... Train. That's why we're using the phone I right now. I dropped the phone in the lifting green on me, then a tree in dispensary. Temper shorter than mini me. My big skin color is the same as Tennessee. Alrighty, I have the SD card now, so we're back on the uh, DSLR. Looks like we got the exhaust out. Yeah, sounds like it's mostly coming out. We were off to a fantastic start breaking this plastic, I guess, dash trim here. Dude. But now it looks like we're actually off to a good start, so fingers are crossed that it's smooth sailing the rest of the way This isn't our first rodeo, so it should be relatively easy, but don't want to jinx anything uh, We're gonna get a quick update on what's going on. How's it going? It's going. This is the last bolt to get the exhaust out <laughs> So we do have the exhaust out now It's all packed up in the truck. Are we draining fluids first? Um uh, We continue be continued. You guys will know in one cut. All right, so we're not draining fluids today and we're gonna do all the easy stuff first. Yes, sir. <laughs> we removed the battery, but we have to put it back in because I remembered we have to drain the fuel lines. To drain the fuel lines, you have to run the car out until it dies. Hey, um, see, this is my boy. He knows how we like to get it done in this garage, which is getting absolutely nothing done. Sadly. Yes, sir. Um, if you come back here, there is, and this is what we did last time, but it took a long time last time, like at least 30 minutes um, to drain the fuel lines, which I don't know if that's right or not. I feel like that should not be that long. You have this button here, which we are going to press. Oh no, we disconnect, that's right. We pull the plug. So I'll pull the plug and that'll tell the car that it flipped over and to cut all fuel. The car will think it's upside down and hopefully <laughs> we'll be able to drain the fuel. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. That is what I think happens. I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on anything you see in any of these videos. I'm not a mechanic. <laughs> Disclaimer. Christian's gonna go start up the car and we're actually open headers, so this is gonna be really loud. Start it with it in, 
and then pull it. So I've been tasked to go back here. I'll just show you guys, hold on. So we're actually going to plug this back in, which I can't even see. Now we have it plugged back in. Then he's gonna start the car, and then while it's running, I'm gonna go in, unplug that real quick, and then it should, should die out. All right, man, start this bad boy up. Yeah, that's loud. It's detached. Oh no. A nasty tail. It smells so bad. Oh my god. Like it sounds like a. If you know a better way to drain the fuel lines, comment down below. If you guys own an SN95 Mustang and you do flip your car, just letting you know, your engine will run for a minute and counting. So you'll at least burn for a minute before before it stops uh, running. <laughs> 30 minutes last time, which is way longer than I think it should. So it, it went from a dying V8 to a very normal idle. I don't like that. <laughs> now we won't be able to work in the garage for at least an hour. One eternity later. Probably about 30, 45 minutes later. It's been a while, but we finally got her to die. But yeah, so garage, garage is vented out, so we will not die. But yeah, we're gonna pop this intake off and maybe a few other things, and then we'll probably wrap it up here. Easy one man job. Damn, bro. That's a fat supercharger you got right there. Thanks, bro. I worked really hard for it. I <laughs> saved up so much money just to buy this fat turb ski. It makes all the sweet noises. Here we are, putting the battery back in the engine bay. No comment. <laughs> None. And he's getting back inside the car. Oh, he's just gonna block out the haters now. Yeah, can you see me through the tents? <laughs> just a man going to work with his battery. And it's back on the shelf. We're good this time? Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Get that later. Oh my god, this thing is hot. Why is this so hot? Maybe because the engine ran for the last 30 minutes as we tried to bleed out all the gasoline. Alright, alternator is out. Throttle body, and then see ya. And then, yeah. ripped my other glove, so we're thumbless. <laughs> this is where we're uh, gonna call it for night one. Got a lot done. Next time you see us, we will be draining all the fluids, pulling trans, pulling drive shaft, and then pulling the motor. So we can build that thing and make some nice juicy power. Mo power, baby. Mo power, babe. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Please go down, hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.